Asalaamu Alaikum friends and welcome to a Muslim Mum podcast. In today's podcast I'm going to be speaking about um, how to create a um, Salah routine for your kids. Now I know this is a subject that a lot of us think about how can we motivate our children to want to love to pray Salah What's the best way to teach them? How can we encourage them without it, them thinking it's a chore and, you know, keeping it positive? So I've, uh, what I've done is I've created a course. It's a free online course um, for mums like you. Um, and it's based on the advice that I've received, um, you know, things that I've read, um, practical things that I did that I found worked because my children are now teenagers and alhamdulillah by the will of Allah they do pray regularly it's you know I don't need to tell them to pray it's so nice when you get to that point um where you're now not having to remind them it's something they want to do it's something you know they're going to do that when they go outside whether you're there or not and alhamdulillah it's I thank Allah for that because knowing your children are praying you think yes I have done a good job in that aspect with my children so I know it's it's a topic that mums think about and so you know that I thought it would be great to share my advice my tips um that I've used and I things I've read quite a lot about this as well so it's you know you know the, the idea when we gain knowledge we shouldn't just keep it to ourselves knowledge should be passed on to others so inshallah that is the purpose of the um this podcast so you know let's okay let's begin creating a positive thoughtful salah routine for your children now um so one of the things that we think about is what age should we get them to start praying you know what age should we encourage it now i would say get them as early you know as early really as you can that they should see you praying they should if they want to join in on the mat if they're you know when they're babies even put them down on the mat next to you so when you're praying it just becomes a very normal just like they play they eat they you know other routines that they do this is just part of their routine that's what you want it to be and um the thing is that Allah gives us salah so we can routinely communicate with him directly five times a day and getting children comfortable with prayer helps them to understand that Allah is always close and accessible that's what you want to do that they want to this isn't this is something we do we in our salah we um we are reciting surahs that are communicating to Allah we are praying to Allah, you know we are do, you know surah fatiha is a dua you know to keep us on sirat al mustaqeen so it's um that that's the that's the first really important thing i think that getting them start them young and then um so when you, your intention should be that i'm i want this to be a lifelong this isn't going to be a quick thing that's one thing to to remember this isn't um an overnight they're going to learn salah like it's not like they reach seven or five and you want them to learn all the steps and you expect quick results remember if we start before they actually reach the age of maturity where it's actually further on them where they are you know will be accountable if we get them early into salah <coughs> you know just like we get them into early eating healthy habits you know that's we get them into those habits early we get them to um, tidy up their room we get them to wash themselves you know every with our children it's about habits and forming good habits now one of the things that is so important is to begin with asking Allah for help you know before you begin this rewardable task do dua to Allah <coughs> as only Allah can make it easy for you and ensure its success in the Quran in um, Surah 14 Ayah 40 Allah says my Lord make me an establisher of prayer and from my descendants our Lord and accept my supplication so that is the dua in the Quran that we can recite um, to, to help us to um, in, in this journey that we are about to to you know embrace and um, you know Allah, Allah listens to our duas Allah 
or you know we should never um uh, think any dua is too little it's you know every you know even there's the hadith uh, narrated by aisha i'm paraphrasing it but um you can look it up I'll, I'll put it up on um you can see it on the blog that you know aisha said that you should do dua even if it is for you can do dua even for shoelaces something as small as shoelaces so something as big as um you know, doing the while that our children become regular in the salah, you know, that that's something so is so important to do. My next piece of advice would be to think back to when you were taught how to pray and what encouraged you to pray? What was um what worked? So for example, um were you told off? You know, was it told how was Salah introduced to you that um, it's were did you know were the hadith and ayah, you know the blessings were they explained about salah? Was um, you know like for the example the whole narration of how salah was given to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? You know the when you know the num the numbers that we were told to pray. You know when he went, um, you know the, the whole narration about when he went to, to Jannah and he was given the instruction by Allah. These are all things that um, I think are really important that we think about what worked for us, what made it click, you know, um, and what didn't. So, you know, and we don't, we want to learn from the mistakes that were made with us and we don't repeat them. And I would say that's um, really important in parenting generally that some people just copy the way their parents raise them in everything where you know in all kinds of things and I think it's important as Muslims we are less given us an akal we have a mind we have a brain parenting we have to just stop and think that if something if even we might be doing something with our kids and it's just not working um, you know let's say shouting shouting and salah you know, I know, I totally understand. Sometimes we do get angry. So I'm, you know, and we ask Allah to forgive us. We Anger is from shaitan. So we want to avoid that when parenting, you know. Um, so when it comes to Salah, if our kids start linking Salah to mum shouting at me, um, mum saying, you're, you know, it, of course we do have to tell them once they reach an age, they should be told that there's a punishment for not praying Salah. You will, when you meet Allah, one of the first thing that you will be asked about is your Salah. And if that is good, then everything is good. If that is bad, then, you know, the rest of your, you know, the, the, when your book is opened of your deeds, if that, if Salah is not there, you, you are in trouble. So I'm not saying that we um, ignore the, don't talk about the punishments, don't talk about hellfire, don't talk, you know, that is important. But I think there's a time, you know, when they're very young, or, you know, like when I'm saying young, five, six, seven, eight, Overemphasizing that aspect, I don't think is the best thing to do because what we're trying to encourage here is a love for Salah, you know, a love for Allah, you know. But I do know, and I've noticed this, and, and you may notice as well, that people, whether it's in public or just generally, people don't want to talk about, um, you know, the the punishments in it, you know, it, it, that mentioned the Quran, the negative you know, they see that as in a negative light, that no, let's not talk about those things, but we mustn't do that. We have to take the whole of the Quran. But so that's age appropriate. That's what I'm saying. Um, however, the, the this main point of advice here is about think about what worked with you and do those positive things with your children when it comes to Salah. So, you know, that's, but again, and I'm, what I am encouraging is please think about how am I going to introduce Salah rather than just, um, you know, repeating mistakes that, that happened with you. Um, now, um, there are, you know, young, young kids learn through play. That's one of the, uh, the next thing. So, you know, why not use this principle when teaching your child Salah? If you make prayer a fun, enjoyable activity, then your child will want to pray. So, for example, one of the things in uh, one of the things I created a long time. This book is maybe ten years old now. Is it's a my salat and color, wudu coloring book. Um, 
that it's available on my website farhathameen.com it goes through the steps of salah you know you can rip out the pages and then blue tack them onto the kit your child's wall that again that is one thing there are, there are other coloring books but i'm just saying use some be a bit creative in when you know when we're teaching them colors their abc the arabic alphabet we use coloring books so why not use coloring books when it comes to salah right and so um that's just the uh, that's just the beginning of um that's actually the beginning of the course that i then sent there's lots more in the course it would take quite a long time to go through all of them and i think it's actually worth reading you know there are some things that you can put in a blog post um, and some things you can put in a podcast you can talk about but there are some things i think we do need to read and research as well so inshallah if you would like to um get the whole course you you can go on my website it's um go to muslim parenting courses um that's you know you can easily find um it there and then you'll get it sent to your e inbox and inshallah i really hope that it helps you um i've had a lot of positive feedback about this course and alhamdulillah it makes me so happy when mums let me know that yes this has worked for me inshallah as mothers it's really important that we set a good example when it comes to salah now um as you know salah is obligatory for Muslims. It's it's one of the five pillars of Islam. You know, it's the first thing that we will be questioned about when we meet our Creator Allah after we have been on you know on the on the day of judgment, and whether you're rich, poor, strong or weak, black or white, male or female, you know, prayer allows the believer to enrich their spirituality and cultivate the soul's right to love and worship their Creator Allah. Allah says in Surah Taha, Ayahs 13 to 14, Verily I am Allah, there is none worthy of worship, but I, so worship me and offer prayer perfectly for my remembrance. The importance of prayer is conveyed constantly in the Quran and was also stressed by the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, when he said, Know that among your duties prayer is foremost. The performance of prayer five times a day is considered vital to attain success in this life and the next. Following the testimony of faith, the shahada, performance of the prayers at their correct times and a complete in bowings, prostration and humility will guarantee forgiveness from Allah and everlasting paradise. We believe that the first matter that will be brought to account for on the Day of Judgment is the Salah, as I mentioned previously. If it is sound, then the rest of our deeds will be sound. And if it is bad, then the rest of our deeds will be bad. Therefore, prayer provides a constant reminder of the essence of our creation and provides a direct connection to Allah, who linked success and happiness to humility in prayer. If you think the um, action of bowing, you know, prostrating down... We don't do that to anyone, uh, but in our salah, we are doing that. Is such a wonderful act it's of obedience, and it shows that we submit to Allah when we pray. So, doing that five times a day, well, we do it more than five times a day in the salah. Uh, but the action is really is so important. It shows your commitment to Allah. It shows you are you know you're not just saying you believe. You are you are physically doing something to show that, and. The thing is, that I think, um, you know, I, I wonder, everyone has different reasons for not praying. And it could be, for example, that the way you were taught how to pray when you were young, or the way it was in, you were told to pray, maybe there was a certain amount of negativity or anger involved in that, and you felt like you were being forced or you were being told off. So that could be one reason. Um, you know, we can think we're really busy. I don't have time to pray. So work, for example. So if I wake up for Fajr, then a few hours later, I have to wake up to go to work. I'm going to be tired. That may be a reason. Um, again, it might be just the idea of rushing, you know, it, at work, where will I pray? Um, you know, that that's an issue. Where am I going to find a space where I can stop everything and pray? Sometimes uh, when, for example, women don't wear hijab, they then think, oh, am I being a hypocrite? I then put my a scarf on and I pray and then I take it off. Um, you know, again, the idea of busyness. We're busy 
as mums taking care of the kids, doing the school job, cooking, cleaning, shopping. Um, so now the thing is that um, I, I only you know why you don't pray, um, why you haven't given it an important importance in your life. And I just, I guess in this podcast, I want you to reflect on why. Why is it, are you not giving it enough attention? Are you really that busy? You know, when we put um, worldly things at our work, getting, you know, getting money from the kids, when we put that before a duty that Allah has given every individual, just, you know, no one can do this Salah for someone else. We have to think, why am I doing that? If I really believe that Allah exists, if I know Allah's there, I'm, why am I not listening to him? And also then you think, well, why is it that I then, for example, why do I even bother to eat halal food? Yeah, why do I tell my kids not to, to, to be respectful to me and to not swear, for example, or to not shout at me or to be kind, to generous? You know, only you know why you're picking and choosing. But what I'm saying to you as your sister and is that why, yeah, why are you doing that? You know, it's funny, I can't say this to, you know, there's certain people I know and even, you know, in general, you can't, people find it very, um, they get very annoyed or they think, oh, or I might even think, oh, I don't want to upset them by be, saying something so blatant to them that why aren't you praying? You know, when I think, okay, let me think back to why, why I didn't used to pray. When I was, at, um, Alhamdulillah, thank Allah, I started to pray when, I think it was about praying all five properly, uh, when I was 18. And I think it was once I just realised I cannot, once I started thinking that, okay, and I thought, yeah, is, like, Alhamdulillah, my parents taught me how to pray. And they encouraged it. My dad used to get us together and we'd pray together. And it was really good. So I think my parents did their best. But I think I I just didn't think about it, to be honest. I just thought, oh, I'll pray when I want to. And I, I didn't bother to research or I didn't read the Eye of Quran. Yeah, that's for sure. I didn't read any Hadith. I didn't read any Eye of Quran about so I was just purely based on what my parents had told me. And I think that was my problem, that I hadn't sat down and independently you know, thought about it and thought, yep, this is definitely something I want to do because I know that Allah is definitely there and I know that Allah is definitely going to ask me about it and that the next life is everlasting. And this time I'm thinking, uh, you know, about, oh, I'm going to miss, you know. Well, uh, to be honest, it was, uh, I, I, was at col- I was at college then and the thing is I could, it was, uh, what would we do is I would go and find a empty classroom or I knew a uh, family friend around the corner from college. I'd go and pray at her house. And she was so happy when I was an auntie. She's lovely. Mela reward her. She just let me come and pray Salah there when I couldn't find an empty classroom. So the thing is, it was hard. It was difficult. Um, it wasn't easy. Um, but I just decided I'm not going to miss my Salah anymore. It's not worth it. College It's not worth it. And I remember where late, many years later at school, when I was a high school teacher... And the school I was at was mainly, it was all non-Muslim really. There was no prayer room. And I used to go to my classroom that I shared with another teacher and I would lock it and I would put paper on the window, the door, and I'd I'd even turn the lights off so that people would think there's no one in there and they wouldn't try to come in because when they try to come in, it'd be locked and think, oh, why is this door locked? And I would pray and... Sometimes I'd actually have to pray in a little cupboard. It was the book cupboard because I was an English teacher. And I'd pray and there was quite a small space. And one day, it was so funny, the boys used to come and leave their footballs in there. And I'm praying and one of the boys just threw the ball in. And um, it hit me. And he said, oh, sorry, Mrs Patel. And he just thought I was in there doing God knows what, like sorting out the books probably. And I remember, okay, and... And the thing is, and I've had, you know, people, teachers walk in on me and they'll, as you're praying, they'll say, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I don't want to disturb you. And um, it's funny, they wouldn't ever say to me later, oh, what were you doing? But as you can see, it's, I, I know exactly how awkward it can be, how difficult, how strange. You know, I've prayed in changing rooms. 
you know, now you things now you have malls and they have prayer rooms in malls. The one the last schools I worked at, they had a prayer room. And I used to love it. I'd go in there and pray and the other students would be with me, the girls. And they used to love it when I'd be, we'd all talk to each other. It was so nice. So um, my advice really is you can do it. Yeah, if I can do it, you can do it. And the rewards, I feel so, when I started to then pray regular, I felt so much more happy. I didn't feel guilty anymore. I didn't used to feel like scared about, oh, I'm neglecting a duty there, you know, um, it's, um, you know, prayer really does purify the heart and truly through prayer, I believe it attains spiritual devotion and moral elevation. You know, that's what I'm talking about. Prayer not only gives a deep connection with Allah, but in prayer, one establishes patience, humility, sincerity. Um, prayer provides a means of repentance and is a restrainer from shameful and um, unjust deeds. You know, this is conveyed through the following hadith of the Prophet wasallam. It's narrated in um, Bukhari and Muslim. If a person had a stream outside his door and he bathed in it five times a day, do you think he would have any filth left on him? The people said no filth would remain on him whatsoever. The Prophet wasallam then said, this is like the five daily prayers. Allah wipes away the sins by them. And so, you know, if you're at that stage where you're not, you know, who's perfect, but you're trying, that's what you have to do, you have to try, you have to make an effort, you have to do something, you have, if you died today, you have to be able to say to Allah, I, I was trying, I was walking down Sirat al I was making, an, I was trying to obey you, you know, and I was doing something, not, not just in my head, and wishing I did it, you know, with, um, so it's, you at least take the first step, take one, do one Salah first, make that habit, then, within a week, two salas, you know, get, make yourself a plan, you know, just like you want a job, you want to lose weight, you want to, I don't know what we want to do, we want to get our kids to read, you know, all these things, we, we have goals, we want to achieve stuff, you should make salah a goal, and start doing something, you know, don't just sit around doing nothing, if we can sit and, I do it, we all, you know, if we can sit and watch a whole series in a week, you know, that's like 10 episodes, that's 10 hours, that's, Salah doesn't even take that long, but we'll sit and watch a Netflix episode, series in a week, um, so you just, just put it in, put, put in perspective that, you don't listen to Shaitan, you can do it, and, you know, just remember, prayer, prayer engages you in constant remembrance of Allah, and keeps you away from doing, you know, if you, whatever it is, getting angry, whether you've, you know, I say this to um, my kids that, you know, whether it's, you know, someone who, it's hard for someone to pray and then go and have a boyfriend. It's hard for them to pray and do drugs. It's hard for someone to pray and um, go and drink. You know, can you imagine, like, I don't think a lot of people who do those things pray regularly because doing bad things becomes easy. Whereas when you keep praying, you start thinking, I want to do more good and I want to reduce the amount of haram stuff I'm doing that that's what happens that's what happened with me and I think my salah came and there at first and then I started to wear hijab I then started to make up my fast I then started to be more respectful to my parents that I think is it's like a stepping stone so you know the previously in the, in the podcast I was speaking about encouraging our children to pray so we need to be the role models for them and then inshallah when you think every time you're praying salah and your kids joining you, it's the best feeling in the world. I, I've got a photo. It's really funny. I, I took, got my kids to stand on the prayer mat. I don't know if anyone else has done this. And I took photos of them praying. And I was thinking, why? I, it was actually, they said, why are you doing that? And I said, I just, I want to have a photo of you, all three of you praying. Can we just have a pretend prayer session, please? And I've got that photo and I love it. It's, you know, it, it makes me so proud when I, when I look at it. So inshallah, I hope this helped and, you know, let's remember each other in our du'as and I do du'a for you that you do begin to pray salah and may Allah accept your salah and all of your du'as.